Welcome. So today I'm going to be talking to you about the complete blood count. And I want to demystify for you the complete blood count. Now we're all familiar with the hemoglobin hematocrit, the white blood count and the platelet count. But what about things like the MCV or the MCH or the MCHC or the RDW or the nucleated red blood cell count? What about all of those? And what is the significance of them? We're going to talk about that today. All right, let's start with the MCV, which more people are familiar with than not. So the MCV refers to the mean corpuscular volume. So it's really just the average size of the red cells. And so it's an average. The machine takes all the red cells, averages them out, and it gives you a number. And so if this number happens to be normal, that's good. It gives you the sense that all of the red cells are about the same size. That's important, that's normal. But if you have an MCV that is high, that tells you that the cells are larger than they're supposed to be, and it could indicate a megaloblastic anemia, like you can see with B12 deficiency, folate deficiency, or a patient who's on chemotherapy. So high MCV is important because it tells you that you have larger than normal red cells. If the MCV is low, then it's a condition called microcytosis. And so microcytosis means that the red cells are pretty small. You see that in iron deficiency. A really uncommon cause of microcytosis is severe anemia of chronic inflammation. But most of the time, if you see microcytosis, it's going to be iron deficiency or it's going to be a hemoglobinopathy. Okay. Now, the thing about the MCV is that the MCV is actually kind of an average. And so you could have an average that's normal, but you have a population of large cells and a population of small cells that just average out to be normal. So how can you tell whether you can trust the MCV or not? That's where the RDW comes in. The RDW is the red cell distribution width, and it's essentially the width of the red blood cell. So if the width of the red blood cell is normal, it tells you that you can trust the MCV. Most of the time, all the red cells are pretty uniform in size. But if you have an elevated RDW, that tells you that there is great variation in the width of the red cells. And so the RDW being elevated tells you that you probably have a lot of cells that are large, a lot of cells that are small, and probably some cells that are in between as well. So I use the RDW to help me understand the MCV. Okay, what about the MCH? The MCH is the mean corpuscular hemoglobin, and it just tells you about how much hemoglobin is in the red cell. So if you have a normal mean corpuscular hemoglobin, it tells you that for the most part, the red cell is fine. If the MCH is high, then it tells you that, oh, maybe there's too much hemoglobin in this red cell. And if the MCH is low, it's a sign usually of hypochromia. So usually if you look under the microscope, you'll see that the red cells have high central pallor. And so that's a sign of hypochromia when the mean corpuscular hemoglobin or the MCH is low. Okay. The next one is the MCHC. That's the mean corpuscular hemoglobin concentration. And this one is similar to the MCH in that it tells you the concentration of the hemoglobin, but this time it tells you about the concentration of the hemoglobin relative to the size of the red blood cell. So in a situation such as autoimmune hemolytic anemia, where you have spherocytes, you have the same amount of hemoglobin within the red cell, but what you're missing is membrane because the splenic macrophages have taken a bite out of the membrane. And what you're left with is uh, the same amount of hemoglobin, but now less membrane. So there's a lot more hemoglobin in that red cell relative to the red cell volume. For that reason, if the MCHC is high, it may be a sign that there are spherocytes. And so that may lead you to think about conditions like autoimmune hemolytic anemia or even hereditary hemolytic anemias like spherocytosis. That's the MCHC, the mean corpuscular hemoglobin concentration. Okay, now what about the nucleated red blood cell count, NRBC? Is that the same as the reticulocyte count? So the answer is no. So the reticulocytes are red cells that are immature red cells that have lost their nucleus. So the reticulocytes are the very last step before you become a true RBC. A nucleated red blood cell is a reticulocyte precursor. And so if you end up having nucleated red blood cells on the peripheral blood film, then that NRBC count will be high. 
And it just means that you have very early precursors in the peripheral blood film. You can see this in conditions like sickle cell disease, and you can see this when the marrow is under great stress and it's just shooting out a lot of new red blood cells to try to make up for severe anemia. So you can see that in patients who have hemolysis and an otherwise normal functioning bone marrow. Okay, so today we talked about the MCV, mean corpuscular volume. We talked about the MCH, mean corpuscular hemoglobin. We talked about the MCHC, mean corpuscular hemoglobin concentration. We talked about the RDW, red cell distribution width. And we talked about the nucleated red blood cells, which are not reticulocytes, but they're red blood cell precursors that are still nucleated. All right, that has been me demystifying for you the complete blood count. I'll see you next time.